Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Today, we're checking out the new Revera Stage 4 guitar amplifier. Let's get started. Most people know Paul Revere for his current company and amplifiers from Revere Amplification. But Paul has a long and storied history that reaches all the way back to 1968 when he began modifying amps for guitar players. In the 1970s, his modded amps were famously used in the studios by legends such as Paul Jackson Jr., Larry Carlton, Chet Atkins, Steve Lukather, Tommy Tedesco, and many, many more, as well as prominent musicians including Rick Nielsen, Kerry Livgren, and more. Those famous amps were based on what Paul called his Stage 2 mod, and you've heard them countless times on recordings by everyone from Steely Dan to Michael Jackson's Thriller, where Paul Jackson Jr. played a Stage 2 mod amp. The hallmark of these amps was the combination of a stellar clean channel with the ability to scoop out the mids for a tight, funky rhythm sound as well as an overdrive channel with a six-position fat switch and a built-in boost. Now, a few years back, Revere made a run of Stage 2 modded amps, which we exclusively carried here at Sweetwater. In fact, I purchased the original Proof of Concept amp from that run, and I still use it constantly in my studio. It's the amp that's on 95% of my guitar tracks on my recent EP Foundation. But I, and a lot of other musicians, were always hoping for some tweaks and additional features that would take the Stage 2 mod amps completely over the top for both live and studio use. So today, I'm thrilled to announce that those hopes have finally been realized because Revera has released the Stage 4, an all-new, all-Revera amp that's been designed from the ground up to incorporate everything from the Stage 2 mod amps, but with additional features including a mid-range control on the clean channel, foot-switchable channel switching, reverb on both the clean and overdrive channels, and a buffered effects loop. You also get foot-switch control over the boost on the overdrive channel. <laughs> The amp is all tube, and it's rated at 25 watts of output into its Eminence EM12 speaker. Now basically, the Stage 4 has all the features you need for stage and studio, along with the classic, awesome Stage 2 mod tones. Let's take a closer look. The Stage 4 amplifier has two channels, clean channel and an overdrive channel. Beginning with the clean, we have a volume control, and then we have treble, middle, and bass controls. Now the original Stage 2 mod amp didn't have a mid-range control, so that's a nice addition here. And it allows us to either scoop the mids, for a nice sparkling tone, or we can crank them up, which is going to drive that channel a bit harder and really fatten things up, give it a lot of punch. Now we also have two switches, so if we roll this back to about four, if we pull the treble control, we get a bright boost. Under the mid-range control, we have a notch filter. And that's great for those tight, funky rhythm sounds. And of course, we can combine those to get a nice, hollow, bright tone. Now another big addition to this amplifier compared to the original Stage 2 is we now can foot switch the channels before you had to actually move the cable or use an external Y switch to access the two channels. So that's very convenient with this Stage 4 amp. I've got the foot switch here, just step on that, and now I'm on the overdrive channel. We have a unique control here, and that's this six position fat switch. So we have our input gain level, treble control, the fat switch, mid-range control, and bass. Rounding things out on this channel is the master volume control and the presence control. So if we set our gain at about six, I've got uh, PAF style humbuckers here. We get a nice crisp tone. Now I'm at the sixth position here on the fat switch. Let's roll that back to position one. And as we turn that up, we're increasing the low end and also bumping up the gain.
This allows you to get great overdrive tones, whether you're using a low output humbucker like this, a single coil, a P90, or even a high output humbucker. Let's bring up the gain a little bit. We'll set that to about eight. Set that there. We'll roll back the fat switch to position four. Bring up our mids a bit more, a bit more bottom end. We're getting in a nice crunch territory now. Now we also have a bright switch on this channel. And we can scoop the mids. So between those two switches, the three EQ controls, the six position fat switch, we have a lot of tonal shaping power on this overdrive channel. In addition, we have the presence control, which affects the high end and the overall presence of the sound. We also have a master reverb control. On the stage four amplifier, the reverb applies to both channels, the clean and the overdrive. On the original mod amps, it was only on the overdrive. So that's a nice improvement here with this amp. You can't see it on the front panel, but we also have tremolo built into this amplifier. We access it with a foot switch, and there are controls on the back panel for speed and for depth. The back panel also has a buffered effects loop, again a nice addition compared to the original mod amplifiers, and we have level controls for both send and return on that effects loop. The Stage 4 wouldn't be what you consider a high gain amplifier. If we turn things all the way up here on the dirty channel and hit it with the humbucker, It's a nice crunch tone and a nice blues fusion-y type of a lead tone, but if you want even more gain, you can step on the foot switchable boost. So there's plenty of gain there for nice fat singing lead sounds. Another hallmark of the Stage 4 is that it takes pedals very, very well. So if you do want a high gain tone, just run a high gain pedal into either the overdrive channel or the clean channel and you'll get great sounds as well with all that tonal shaping that's available in either channel. As you can hear, the Stage 4 amp sounds fantastic. For an even better understanding of why the Stage 4 works so well, and its history reaching back to the Revere mod amps of the 70s, let's bring in a special guest. I'd like to welcome Paul Jackson Jr. to our video. Paul has had a stellar career in the LA studio world as well as in the film and television worlds and also is a successful solo artist. The Revere Stage 2 mod amp played a big part in his success on recordings such as Thriller, which I mentioned earlier. So Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, looks like you're coming to us from your home studio. I am coming to you from a secret location, otherwise known as, yes, the home studio. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. You got some nice stuff there. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, sneakily observing over your shoulder all the cool, cool toys you got going on there. Oh, thanks. You know, I, I have, uh, I have, well, I'm a geezer, so geezers have old gear. And fortunately, what's old is new again. So you see a mini Moog at a Rhodes, and there's a Whirly over there. And, right. and I got, a, you know, a bunch of old amps in the studio. So it's, it's a wonderful place to be creative. Right, right. Very cool. Very cool. Well, speaking of older amps, you, uh, you have one of the original Rivera mod amps from back in the day. Tell us a little bit about how you encountered that amplifier, how that amplifier came to be. Well, let's see. The way I found out about the amplifier was I, um, uh, started doing a little studio work in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. And I noticed that all the guys had the Fender amps, but they had these funny knobs on them. And I said, okay, well, what are those funny knobs? And after a little investigation, I found out that those were the mods done by none other than Paul Rivera. So I had a deluxe and, and uh, so I took it to Paul and he did his, I believe the stage two mod uh, with the mid range boost and the master volume and the, uh, and the gain boost. And, uh, and that was the go-to amp that I had for years. Then I bought a Vibrolux and had them do the same, uh, the same mod. Hmm. And those were my stereo pair of amps that I used on uh, most of my early recordings for probably the first, oh, gee, probably the first 10 years of my, of my recording career, at least. Right, right. So you always used a pair in stereo? Always used a pair in stereo. I mean, if, well, I shouldn't say always. If there was a date where there were two or three guitar players, I would just use one, which was usually, usually the deluxe. But uh, and uh, in this funny in the Vibrolux, I also had him put the uh, 12 inch EVM 12L speaker. Hmm. And uh, 
but uh yeah usually if it was usually it was stereo if it was just me or overdubs but if there were a, several guitars i would just go mono and, and just use the deluxe right right and, and you kind of uh you kind of glossed over it there but it was used on some pretty important albums back in the day yeah i mean i used it on uh michael jackson's thriller on on uh, both of the uh, first second record for whitney houston um chicago 17 i used it on donna summer's bad girls i used it on the record i did with ella fitzgerald uh recording with the crusaders uh like street life and also the record they did with bb king um record i did with Cher. uh you know most of the early early recordings were well i should like i said the first about the first 10 years were just those two amplifiers Right. So what was it that drew you to that amplifier? I mean, I know it's got a ton of tone shaping capability, both in the clean channel, and then it's also got that nice overdrive channel. Yeah, well, it was the recordability. Um, you know, it's recording is about getting a great sound and getting it fast. So, for instance, I remember we were doing a record. I was working with Gene Page. We were doing a record for Johnny Mathis. And uh, we were recording at what was then A&M Studios, which is now Henson. So you come in and you have three hours to record three songs. They don't want to hear technical problems. They don't want to hear you trying to EQ your amp. They don't want to hear this. What they want to hear is they want to put up a mic, hear a great sound, let's go. And so that was because I saw it in so many recordings, I knew that that amp would have a good, you know, a good recordable, nice, fat song, found, fat sound that would sit well in the mix. So that was, you know, that was what, what made it appealing is that you did not have to fight hard to get a great sound out of that amplifier. Right. What kind of guitars were you using through that amplifier? Uh, back then, I was using uh, my Brown Valley Arts uh, Strat that I still use to this day. I was using a 335. I had a Les Paul Custom that I used. So probably those three guitars primarily. Telecaster sometimes, but probably those three mainly. Mm -hmm. and, and when you'd go in with the amplifier to sit down, say, for Thriller or one of those sessions, did they give you direction? Did they say, what we want is this kind of a tone, or did they just throw it to you and say, Paul, give us a great part? Usually they throw it to me and say, Paul, give us a great part. Mm -hmm. Part of, uh, you know, being a working musician is uh, is kind of knowing uh, your instrument and, and being able to take cues from the producer or the songwriter and say, you know what? I think I got your cue. I think I got your direction. Let me head this way. And uh, and usually it worked out. Usually, you know, your, your instincts are very good. So uh, that was part of it. Usually they just throw it to me and, and I'd come up with something. Right. Right. So, uh Given that, and given that you're playing uh, like a Les Paul or a 335 or something, you're getting those nice, crisp tones that really cut through very well on a lot of those tracks. Were you using the mid scoop on the amplifier to pull out the mid range or the bright boost, or how did you typically set it up? Uh, actually, I usually would crank a little mids in, hmm. as as Jay Graydon would say. And at, at fact, Jay Graydon was was really one of the early people that that helped Paul develop it. And as Jay would say, it's all about the mid range, man. It's about the mid range. <laughs> so a lot of times I'd actually boost the mid range, boost the mid range, boost the highs, because um, you know you figure the the um, the low mids and and the mids on the guitar is is really you know, the, like the fat portion. And the funny thing is if you acknowledge or if you analyze 3K, 3 kilohertz, that's the frequency that's really prevalent in just a plain guitar, but it's also a frequency that can be kind of displeasing to people. So if you're able to roll in enough mid-range to kind of like round it out a little bit, it, it always seemed to help the sound. Right. So you were using then the overdrive channel to do that because the, the clean channel doesn't have a mid-range control, correct? Correct. I'd use the overdrive channel and there's a pull push pot that uh, kind of was a pad. So I never, you know, I never boosted in an overdrive unless I had to. Okay. And on that original amp, did that have the six position fat switch on the overdrive channel like the later ones did? It sure did. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And how much did you rely on that? All the time. I mean, it was, I like I said, I would always dial in a certain amount of mid-range, you know, based on the song and the guitar that I was playing. But that was something that I, I was constantly twisting and experimenting with. Um, usually, I didn't take it all the way to six. Usually, I was on about two or three. Mm -hmm. All right, just to round it out a little bit and uh, yeah. bring the gain up just a little bit more. Exactly. Did you use the uh, the boost on that channel very much? Only when doing overdrive stuff, solo stuff, or, you know, like a grunt kind of parts, you know, um, doubling bass lines, things like that. Primarily, mm -hmm. that's when I would use that that feature. Right. And I, I have to ask, I, I, I believe it's true, but have you had a chance to sit down with the Stage 4, the, the new amp from Rivera? I have not. Oh, They've been keeping it secret from me, but hopefully in the next week or so, I'll get a chance to, like, put it through its paces. Well, I've got, uh, they did a run of the Stage 2 mod 
uh, deluxes that we sold here at Sweetwater a few years I back. I remember, yeah. And yeah, I've, I I've got the prototype for that uh, that I bought personally. It was like, I'm not letting that one go. I'm, I'm taking that one home with me. <laughs> and uh, so I've had a stage four, and I've been able to compare mm. side by side with that uh, that prototype amp. And man, I, it's everything you love about the original stage two amps just knocked up a notch. So you now have foot switchable channels. You now have a mid control on the clean channel. You've got an effects loop. Mm. You've got uh, reverb on both channels. So kind of all those things that, at least for me anyway, were, were like, now I can take it on stage and, and use it as well as in the studio and, and have all those extra capabilities. So I, it's really cool. That's fantastic. And it's funny because I used to have conversations with Paul Jr. I said, you know, Paul, it's interesting that everybody talks about a certain amp that begins with a letter D. Right. You know, there's a certain mystique around this D amp. And I said, you know, it's very interesting that very few people actually had the D amp in the studio and that for a good 15, 20 years, all of the hit records that came out of Los Angeles were done by people that had modified Rivera fenders. Mm -hmm. All of them. I mean, Carlton, Wawa Watson, uh, Lukather, uh, everybody had them. You know, all the all the t movie guys had them, John Goo, and, and everybody had this amplifier. And it's interesting that there's the mystique around the D amplifier, but nobody seems to know about <laughs> the Rivera, the Rivera mod modded fenders. And so I'm just really happy that they've that they've come out with it, you know, and so now like the, the masses can really enjoy what we enjoyed. Right, right. And I think it, it, after L.A. adopted it, it migrated to Nashville as well. And a lot of the players there were also using it for, for a lot of the studio stuff in the 70s and 80s, too. So it uh, it did reach out there, but it never quite – well, he never released it to the public, really. It was one of those things where you had to contact him to do it. Right, and that's the other thing I told Paul Jr. I said, you know, your dad is the only person that knows what's in this amplifier. Right. He's the <laughs> only guy. And I said, you know – I. I said, you know, and I have some originals and the last offer I got for one of them was $15,000 and wow. I turned it down. But, um, you know, he's the only guy that knows what's in it, Paul. You, you got to get your dad to do these. So I've been begging him for years. And so I'm glad that he decided to do it. Yeah, it's so cool. Do you recall back in the day, you mentioned that your Vibrolux had an EVM 12L. Do you recall what most of the players were using as a speaker in that amp? They were using the EVM. Okay. The 12. Yep. Yep. They okay. sure were. So the new amp, the Stage 4, has the Eminence EM12, which right. is sort of their take on the, the EVM 12L. And it's a really great sounding speaker. A ton of bottom end out of that and a nice, nice tight mid range as well. So I, I think players are just going to love it. Yeah. Very familiar with that speaker. Um, uh, having spent some time with Eminence and actually with that speaker, I am very familiar with it. It's a great, great speaker. Right, yeah, it works super well in, in, in this amplifier. Um, have you used the app much, much with uh, pedals? Do you find it to be a good pedal platform? Absolutely. I mean, that was the cool thing about not just the clean channel, but the push-pull pod on the on the overdrive channel is, you know, be it a, because I used to use, you know, compressors and mutrons and octave dividers and wah-wahs and all kinds of things. And because of the push-pull pod, you know, it always cleaned up very nicely, and it was a really, really good pedal platform. Right, right. I've, I've found that as well. And even the clean channel with a, an overdrive into it or a, a fuzz or whatever uh, sits really well. And again, the new one with that adjustable mid-range lets you really beef up that clean channel too and, and make that as fat as the overdrive channel. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'm looking forward to hearing you get your hands on it. I think that's going to be a, an awesome, awesome demo. And man, we so appreciate you sitting down with us here today to talk about the amplifier and the history with it. I mean, man, just the incredible list of albums you use that on is just, wow, it's just mind blowing. Man, I appreciate it. Well, Mitch, I mean, I appreciate you having me and, and being here at, at Sweetwater, which is a place where I get most of my gear. So this, well, awesome. this is Thank a good you. thing. Yeah. yeah tell, yeah. tell Chuck I said hello. And actually, I just, what did I just get? A couple of microphones. And uh, so I'm always getting stuff from Chuck. So, nice. so uh, yeah, um, uh, Kenny is my salesman. Kenny and Tammy are, are uh, my sales folks, and uh, they take really good care of me. That's awesome. Well, thank you. We appreciate it, and we appreciate your time today. And, man, I'd, I'd love to sit down with you soon. Let's do a, a full-on interview and talk about uh, your incredible career and your, your career as a solo artist and through American Idol and all the TV stuff that you did. And everything. I mean, you've done so much, and I, I'd love to share that with the world. I would be happy whenever you, whenever you want. We're going to do it soon. Okay, sounds good. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mitch. Our thanks to the great Paul Jackson Jr. for sitting down to chat with us today. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the new Stage 4 amplifier from Rivera. If you're looking for an amp that can cover a huge range of tones and can cover stage and studio equally well, look no further. The Stage 4 can certainly do it for you. Being a faithful user of a Rivera mod amp, I'm super excited about this new true Rivera amplifier because it captures everything I love about my mod amp, but also includes all the features a modern player needs. For complete information, contact your Sweetwater sales engineer or visit Sweetwater.com. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like this, or start at sweetwater.com for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.